It is a wonderful spectacle as a sporting event, and we hope the match lives up to the promise. One key element is that Wolves will tell you they have not had a harder game all season than playing Watford at home. Watford beat them 2-0. But that was back in October. What will April bring? What will Wembley bring? Remember, Wolves in white. Lovely conditions for playing. And we're underway in the second semi-final. Manchester City have done their business here yesterday. The sides separated by just one Premier League point. And are both in the part of a very good season in the domestic competition. They're looking for a very early start with Johnny trying to curl that one in. And if that's a, a flavour of what's to come, we won't be disappointed. Well, it's good link-up play between the two front players. Jimenez to start with, gets it into Jota. And this is really good play from Johnny. That's what they expect from him, the wing-back getting forward. Not that far away, he knows exactly what he's trying to do here. Femenia should get a lot tighter than he did. I've had... Uh... Good weeks, midweek games to build up for this. Of course, Wolves beating Manchester United again. Knocked them out of the FA Cup. And Watford with a splendid second half to sink Fulham. They're relegated with that 4 1 defeat at Vicarage Road. It's a strange decision, I think, from Avi Grazzi to go with a midfield diamond because there's lots of space, so there's going to be a lot of space for the two wing backs. The Wolves to get forward. Michael Oliver is the referee. There was talk that uh, Aurelio Gomez would lose out to the first choice, Ben Foster. I spoke to Ben before the game. He said he's absolutely happier that Gomez is playing than he would be if he was picked himself. And that's not because he doesn't want to play. And he believes it's the right thing to do. The uh, attacking point of the diamond for Watford is Roberto Pereira. Will Hughes, corner. Pereira is a good player, clever round the box. Will Hughes, likewise, very much a left-footed player. Hasn't got great pace. Playing on the right-hand side of that diamond, you allow the fullback to get beyond him. And he'll bend balls into the box for the likes of Troy Deeney. Well, this is going to be bent in, one assumes, left-footed, although the short corner is on, they can go two against one here should they choose to do so. But uh, many a manager would say, look, put the first one on the goalkeeper and see what happens. That goalkeeper is John Ruddy, who's played here before in his Norwich City days. There's the bending ball by Hollybass. There's Ruddy going for it and going for it well. Wolves don't push out too much, but they don't need to, and Ruddy takes charge again. A good start for him. Well, you said put the first set play right on top of the goalkeeper. That's exactly what they did. And he got a good punch on it. And then a good catch on the second one. The two up front on both sides are in good form. Jimenez and more recently Jota has probably come alive since the, uh, the middle of the season, really December he started to get goals in the first team and he's got himself into Portugal's international squad as well. Here is the Spaniard Johnny and Jota staying on his feet and Michael Oliver's given a Free kick on the edge, Will Hughes disputes it, but Jota caused it. And he gave it for the first challenge here. But again, Johnny finding a bit of space, plays the ball in. That's the foul that was given, just unbalanced him. It was Mary Apper who came out, threw himself at the ball. Just unbalanced Jota, I think that's good refereeing. 
He waited to see if there was an advantage. Well, Gomez, very much at the veteran stage of his career. Trying to make sure the wall is set properly. Also wanting to make sure that he gets some sort of sight of this. Xiao Moutinho. He's played at Wembley before for Portugal. And here he goes. Oh, Gomez watched. Maybe hoped. And his hopes were answered. Well, Moutinho played in midfield for Portugal recent game against Ukraine with Neves. One player's got a great, powerful shot. Martino's more creative with his right boot. On that occasion, he just couldn't get it down in time. Sixth time they've been paired together in the FA Cup. Wolves winning through and four of the previous five, including an extraordinary 10-0 win over Watford. Well, that was back in 1912, a few weeks before the Titanic set sail. Now, Jared Lefeu sitting there behind Ben Foster. Not, I don't think, impressed with the selection. He's been in the team recently, got a hat-trick not that long ago in the Premier League away to Cardiff. But he didn't play with any great gusto in the midweek game against Fulham. And the feeling in the Watford camp, I think, is that that cost him his place at Wembley. Well, he can be an inconsistent player, Delefeu. He's got great pace. Doesn't always make the right runs. Hughes winning the foul. The feeling is also, Stuart, that he will come on in the point of the diamond that's occupied at the moment by the not 100% fit Pereira. Too many touches so far for the ebullient Dini and the Wolverhampton-born Andre Gray, his Dini strike partner today. It was on Wolves, his books as a schoolboy was great. It's one for Dini to come in from behind to try and get to. Back in by Feminia. Drops for Capu, made a big contribution this cup run, Etienne Capu. Dini. The decision is a corner. So Dini comes from the Midlands, not too far away from Wolverhampton, so he's very much that part of the country that Harry Grassi has gone against the team from the black country. He's certainly done a good job, hasn't he? Grazia. Yeah, he's a very calm man, and that... I think when you're given the Watford job, it helps to be calm, because it doesn't usually last very long, but he's outstripped all the other Watford managers in terms of Premier League games in charge. Usually been one season, wonders might be overstretching it, one season employed. And here's Jimenez, just ran off Hughes, Watford's way. And now Gray trying to get away, and he's quick and direct, but it fall from there. It is great to see two up front for both sides. Says so took a whack on one of those last crosses that came in. Volley's going to play on the left-hand side, but they're going to be up against two centre-forwards. One who's good in the air, Troy Deeney, the other one, Gray, who loves to run in behind. And here is the combination shaping up now. Just as you say, Stuart, but, uh, Gray was offside. Watford beats non-league opposition in Woking in the third round and uh, Premier League opposition in Newcastle in the fourth and the sixth New with Newcastle and Crystal Palace in between a win at Queen's Park Rangers. They're all pretty narrow successes, but they've only conceded the one goal along the way. Hughes. Pereira. Strong tackle by Saiz right under the nose of the referee. Michael Oliver 
Some referees would say, well, it's a semi-final, I'll let one or two go, but the referee thought that this was uh, a bit sinister. Yeah, he went to ground fairly early here. Dives into the challenge. He probably doesn't catch Pereira that much, but Pereira has to jump out the way of the challenge. He's got a nosebleed as well. That was the challenge that he made when the ball came into the box the last time. He's now going to be a man under pressure, because if you are playing on the right-hand side of a back three, at times you're going to have to go out into wide areas, defend those sort of wide areas where Holly Bass may get forward and try and get crosses in. Kure at times may drift out there. Yeah, some of the uh, wider defenders in a back three are converted fullbacks and they're happy to do it. But I'm not sure that these two are particularly gifted in that way. That's why, by playing with a diamond in midfield, Watford may be playing into the hands of Wolves slightly. The blood shirt is required, or at this level, usually a replacement shirt with the right number on. We'll see. will restart before Saiz can come back on, so Watford with a, a man advantage here. And the uh, well, flag has gone up from an ear. The cleverly worked one, one that was obviously designed to play against a, a full complement of defenders. Yeah, they just worked it so Femenia could get round the back here. He was certainly onside, but the ball just went out of play. Tight decision. So the right make, decision. And the right decision, yep. Johnny. Now, Sean Martino. Willie Bolly, Jota, made a change in the season. Sure, it didn't move from 3-4-3 three, three in this system to 3-5-2. Dendonka got in the team. Yep. And it did allow them, of course, to play Jota as a, a striker with Jimenez, who's had a, a terrific season from start to where we are now. Yeah, I think they were worried that they were getting outplayed in central midfield. Now they've got that extra player in there, and it does allow them to play with two up front who have been good at combining with each other. There was a chance for Jota to get hold of it. Taken from him by Mariapa, a long-serving Watford player, his second spell at the club. And uh, Nuno, right, he's had very good resources financially to build this team, but he has built it splendidly to get them up from the Championship to be very competitive in the Premier League, and here they are in an FA Cup semi-final. And it's good to see a manager that's willing to play virtually the same team week in, week out, no matter what the opposition is. Hasn't rested too many players. That's given them that understanding of the role in the team, the formation, what their jobs are, both with and without the ball. Yeah, especially without the ball. I think they're one of the better teams in that respect. They, they catch the eye with a lot of their play when they do have possession. They are tough to get the better of. Watford certainly were able to do that back in October. And they uh, do meet again, their Premier League fixture down here, not far from Wembley. At Vicarage Road is scheduled for later this month. Now on Cathcart as he was trying to come out with the ball. Watford have just settled slightly the better. Whatever rhythm they're trying to play to. Ferocious on the drums. That goes Bolly, knowing that Dini will pull one side or the other to try and give an angle from those kind of set-piece deliveries. Tear it up for his teammates. It's important that both sides get around the knockdown. He might not win them cleanly, but he stops the defender winning them in any distance on his headers. 
He had that tremendous partnership, didn't he, with Igalo for a season. Troy Deeney. Well, they really were a great attacking combination. Well, he's been working hard on his game. He lost weight again. He does have spells where he piles on a, at least a pound or two, but we've got uh, the energetic Ducouré in the midfield behind him. He's very much the spokesman for the club. Cliché, really, to call him Mr Watford, but that's what he seems to most. Jota. And back by Hughes. Trying to get to Matt Doherty further up the pitch, as Johnny has done a couple of times. Coutinho just looking away, thinking, where were you with the pass? Does look as though there's more space out on the left-hand side for Wolves when they get possession. Well, he's been able to get on the ball, so too Johnny. Oh, by Saiz. The man is trying to flick it on. Hughes trying to get it down. And he's helped by the referee's whistle. It's another Watford free kick. Just as if to say, Wolves in that part of the picture find it difficult to uh, get their own period of control. Another chance for Watford to knock it long. It's with Cathcart who goes in short. Femenia. Capu. Kiko Femenia again. By Martinho, as part of Portugal's European Championship winning squad. Coming on for three years ago now. And it is a lot of, I suppose, Portuguese connections that have helped Wolves build the, the side of this stature. Well, in that recent game against the Ukraine, they had more representatives than any other team <laughs> in the Portuguese side. Three in the side. One on the substitutes bench. Yeah, it would of course been Rui Patricio in goal, who's not involved. Will Norris is the substitute, if required for Ruddy. Here's Ruben Neves, who would have been in that Portugal team. Johnny, who is Spanish, has also stepped up into international football this season. Looking for Jimenez in the middle. Jota went to the near post, retrieved by Doherty. Jimenez again. It's a bit too slippery on the turn for De Cure. It's a clever play, isn't it? Jimenez threatens to cross it, drags it back. Gets the right angle on his drag back, the Cure brings him down. And it was good play again from Johnny down the left hand side to get that cross in in the first place. Volley will be a target, just coming round the back. Watford look as though they're going to zone a mark here. To a certain degree, anyway, now they're starting to pick up. But no one's directly picked up. Well, he's certainly not shirt tight, as the expression goes. Kapgar is close to him. And the free kick evades him. Hugo Gray trying to carry it out. When uh, Watford lost there on the FA Cup final to Everton in 84, it was Andy Gray who was the uh, Everton star in those days and scored in a 2-0 Everton win. Many said it was a farm, sure Andy did. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, he seemed to head it, was it in the grass with the goalkeeper Steve Sherwood or not? You wear your colours and you have your point of view, really. Goal was given. Johnny did enough. Danger of conceding a corner, but it's uh, safely, from Wolves' point of view, a goal kick. Now 
has been reprimanded once this season, isn't he? For running on the field when a goal was scored. You know, Spirito Santo. They are supposed to say in their technical areas. The uh, nominated members of the management team, those on the official team sheet. The manager, assistant manager, maybe another coach as well. Physio, of course, as well as the nominated substitutes. Pretty strict. It's been a fairly scrappy start so far. Both sides going long at times. It's gone out. Switch is going to be on again here to Johnny. Just had to check back. Jimenea came out with space in behind him. Jota couldn't get the cross in. Wolf went it back in Watford territory. That's when Gray has a problem, when he's got his back to goal and he's got to try and link up the play. Somebody who loves to run in behind, he's going to work off the flicks from Deeney when he has the ball into his feet. Wolves are trying to nick the ball off it, they've done it two or three times now. And Donker can't get it through. There's a lot of experience of big games in the Wolves ranks. They're going to need it at the moment as here comes forward. Hughes is a good pass to the ball. Watford's midfield. And uh, Femenia by Ferrari wants it back again. Current uh, Argentine international. The, well, he was felled, but Michael Oliver didn't. Femenia gets it again. Ferrari's back on his feet, but the ball's out of play. That's where Ferrari wants to get on the ball in and around the box. He can play little one-twos, he can jink past his opponent. Maybe a little bit unlucky here, holds off the challenge there. Matinho, the player that goes to ground. Well, the medics have done well to get him out there, Roberto Pereira. A lot of pain through the week, hasn't taken part in much of the preparations for this game. He's desperate to play, to be fair. Gracia is pretty keen to use it. Well, they've got some powerful players, they've got players that are good in the air. He's the one that just provides that little bit of something different, Ferreira. On the ball again, you mentioned it, Stuart, that's from Connor Cody this time. Jimenez. Switch it to Johnny again. Jota. Not too many options for him, not clear cut ones. There may be for Watford on the counter attack here. Dakure. Gray have gone infield, and he was on the right hand side when Dakure first looked. A lot of respect between the two. Clubs, the two camps, the two managers. You don't get so much of the mind games these days. It's always uh, very polite, the pre match press conferences, or invariably so, when they're talking about the opposition. Well, because Watford are playing with a diamond and Wolves have got those three central midfield players, it's very tight in there. No one has really been able to get hold of the ball, make things happen. Now there's a chance for Pereira. Moving well. Olivas. Pereira again. Dini and Gray waiting in the middle. And uh, it's not only going to be a free kick, it'll be a booking as well. For Ruben Neves. It was uh, outgunned here. Here's Pereira again. This is what he can do. Great in possession. Little nutmeg. He's almost embarrassed Neves, that's why he grabs hold of Pereira. He would then be racing into the box. Don't he make the foul outside the box? 
just another passage of play that's been rather typical of what we've seen. Watford looking the more threatening, creating a number of set-piece situations. This looks like maybe the most likely one so far. Just looking at the way they're set up. I don't think they can do it, but the, the cut back to Hughes was looking on for a while. There it is. Hughes has scored a wonderful volley against Fulham on Tuesday. Was somewhat less than wonderful with that attempt. Well, originally they were going to roll it to him, but the Tino had blocked that off, so then he went round the back. And he was on for a long time. Wolves didn't pick him up at all. It's Will Hughes who got the first goal of their FA Cup run. Back in January at Woking. Forward for Cathcart. Kapu helping him out. Now, Femenir. Towards Dini is back pedalling. Drops for Pereira. Gray, to get it back. Dini coming on to it. Kind of a situation where his eyes light up. Again, Pereira got to the knockdown, tried to play a little one two, and when it bounces back out to Dini. Trying to wrap his foot around this. There's the set play again. He knew it was coming, he was waiting, he was looking disinterested. He had a lot of time to judge this ball. It just bounces in front of him, tries to catch it on the half volley, slices it horribly. Almost going behind him in the end. Unusual start to Will Hughes's career that he stayed at school. He was, he was doing his A-levels when he was playing for Derby County's first team. I remember doing a match at the start of the season. I said, you're nervous at the start of the season. I'm waiting for my exam results. He said, far more nervous about that. Did he get them? Well, or did he, he get what he wanted? <laughs> I would think so. He's a, a very uh, intelligent young man. the switch of play from Connor Cody, that's what he can do so well. Here's uh, Jimenez, roving wide. That ball again might catch Watford out. It wasn't towards uh, Johnny that time, but uh, Diego Jota. So we've seen Watford Maybe collectively doing slightly better, but Wolves have, you have that feeling that Jimenez and Joshua have done so well in recent games, in recent months, that they might just have a sharper cutting edge if they can fashion the right kind of chance. Well, they've put in some very good counter-attacking performances this season. Both have got that little bit of pace to run in behind, both are decent at holding it up as well. Kapu's header. Both their FA Cup games, first against Liverpool, we saw Jimenez break forward on a counter and score. And then against Manchester United, we saw Jota do exactly the same. It's gone out for a Watford throw. Wolves have done very well, of course, starting with Liverpool, who perhaps didn't put the FA Cup top of their priorities, but that's still taking nothing away from that third round win at Molyneux for Wolverhampton Wanderers. Then they had more problems with lower league uh, Shrewsbury. And held to a replay and in the end just, just got through in that replay. And they went to Bristol City of the second tier and won by the only goal of the game to nil. They set up the confrontation with Manchester United. And they were good value for victory in the quarter final. Frustrated Troy Deeney with the quality of ball that's been played towards him. He wanted that driven in rather than lofted up in the air. Wolves, have, incidentally, taking into account, of course, the old ground as well, have won their last six games on the Wembley site. I mean, the two FA Cups, two League Cup successes. Football League trophy success when they were in the lower divisions. 
and the recent, much more recent win here against Spurs in the Premier League. been such a prosperous patch for Watford Football Club. Here's Mariapa. Permanier. Half an hour gone, the second semi-final. Nowhere near knowing who's going to play Manchester City. The two going in between these two centre halves to try and start things off. Not sure that's where he's best suited, Kapu. He's a box to box player. I've seen him score goals before. He's an all round midfield player. So, that was misjudged. Cody, very nearly in behind Wolves then. They're still on the attack and it's touched over in the end by an onside Andre Gray. Well, I think he's got to go with his head here. When that ball was delivered into the box and he throws himself at it, it's really good, he stays onside. They start to come up, he stays onside, he's not picked up. When the ball's played, if he dives at this with his head, I think he scores. Really good ball played in by Troy Deeney, bending it in. Gets in front of Ruddy. Jota. They're marauding uh, Doherty, a double deflection, and then it's out for a Wolves throw. Pretty soon enough of Doherty down that right hand side. Watford lucky to get it back. But not very far by Holibas. Just held up unfairly. Now they'll be ruining that chance that Andre Gray couldn't take. We've been a feather in the cap of the manager. Put Gray in before De La Feo, and if he got the opening goal. Well, he did well to find the space to stay on side. He's looking across the line. A lot of Andre Gray's family support Wolves. Torn today. Mariapa. Coming in. Touch and play this time for Watford. Out to Hollybass from Capu. Dini. De Coro with that acceleration that's made him a hotter property in the uh, English game than he was when he arrived. That was a good bit of football by Watford, started one side of the field, they switched it out to that left-hand side. Clever little ball played into the front player, Dini rolling it round the side for the Coure. It's up towards Dini again. See, he half. doesn't win it, but the centre-half doesn't seem to win it either. So <laughs> players running beyond that challenge. Could be the ones to profit. And the Coure was in... Kind of area. It's well won by Mariapa. The craftsman who is Yamatino. This is better from Wolves. So, the, uh, attempted penetrating pass from Neves. It was the right pass, he just took, put too much weight on it. It was Jota that was in. He just needs to roll it in between the two defenders with the outside of his right boot. Just over ten minutes to go to half time, and not too much work for the two second string keepers. Who have been the uh, 
FA Cup first string keepers for their respective clubs. Bolling. Done. Johnny going infield. Jota ahead of it. Then Donka has the shot. Work now for Herrelio Gomez. From Den Donka, a pretty decent drive and an acrobatic save. Well, almost the first time we've mentioned Den Donka. Found that bit of space. Good play from Johnny again. I think he strikes this well. This is it may have just taken a slight deflection as well as it goes towards goal. Starts to dip, just comes off the head of Cathcart. That's a good save from Gomez. That the main, slightly more difficult, the fact that it came off Cathcart's head. Cathcart now with the job of marking a volley. Set up slightly differently, Wolves, this time. Take a set piece to open up the second semi final. from the training ground, and it's worked to absolute perfection as Matt Doherty heads Wolverhampton Wanderers into the lead at Wembley. No wonder they're absolutely proud on the bench and they're loud at that end of the stadium. Well, I'm not quite sure what they were looking for to start with. I think it was to get it back to Moutinho. But the cross came in, left-footed. And it's a good cross as well, and he just gets in front of his marker to Kure, and it's an easy header for him. Really well worked in the end. Times his run, the Kure goes to sleep, he's got to be marking the other side. No chance for Gomez, and an easy finish for Doherty. Well, he was the star of the two games against Shrewsbury, but this is the semi-final. And he gets his fourth FA Cup goal of this run. We do have VAR, which would have been checking out what you were looking for, Stuart, to make sure that he'd been onside, on the move, which he clearly was. And it's Watford nil. Wolves one at Wembley. And here's Ruben Neves. The options are to the left. The dangerous Jimenez. Watford desperate to hold him up, and he squeezes it back to uh, where it ran off for uh, Pereira. Fortunately for him, Mariapa stepped in. Well, they're just going to calm themselves down here, Watford. Saiz for the header. But Matt Doherty has been at Wolves a long time. He actually played in the Premier League the last stint that they had, only a, a couple of games. But he's fitted in to the new Wolves, if we can call them that. He's had to adapt as well to become a right wing-back under the new coaching system. And he's done it very well. See him break forward down the right-hand side there, he showed his prowess in the box. Good run from him, the timing was excellent. The Kuro will be very disappointed that he allowed him to run across the front of him. Well, he's stepping in, Wolves with a real spring in their step now. Jota, still going, still going. Oh, that's one of the great goals at the new Wembley. Well, that's what we were talking about, his counter-attacking ability. Great pace. He's got the awareness, the control as well. Driss past Kapu, goes back inside the next challenge of Mariapa, and even goes inside Cathcart. And he's trying to wrap his foot round it and bend it into the corner. Doesn't get the bend he was looking for. It's been a good few minutes for Wolves and their manager, Nuno Sento. Not for him. Them. Such a 
Special day out for the supporters of both these clubs. And the Wolves have men back here. They're going to need them. Is it dropped where Feeney had the chance to show his power? Here's the corner. That's exactly where Troy Deeney wants to receive the ball. With his back to goal, in the box, trying to roll the defender. Saiz, I think, is the player that defends it well in the end. Saiz is tight and gets the block in. Well, a clever corner routine. Open up Watford. Can Watford do the same? Something from their training ground. Get level before half time and it'll reach Ruddy untouched for the relief of the goalkeeper. Has played once for England, John Ruddy, a few years ago now. Well, he probably made the save of the FA Cup this yeah. season, didn't he? Against Liverpool. Yes, yeah, a fingertip. That's onto the frame of the goal. taking a chance, I think VAR would have been a second line of defence for Javi Grassi if the assistant had flagged straight away. I wonder if he's thinking about changing the system at half-time. Here's the goal again, beautifully whipped in, goes beyond volley. Doggerty had got away from his marker, couldn't really miss once he got his head on it. Uh, the skill is getting there, isn't it? And, uh, that comes from many hours of practice. And here come Wolves again, Jimenez running at Watford, the Mexican. Good recovery round, Holivas He's got himself into a good position there. He's nearly 35, and uh, he's still got all his athleticism. Raul Jimenez was on loan, and has now signed for the next four years for Wolves. So, a lot about the present for them, of course, this is a thrilling end to their first season back in the top flight for a while. But the future looks bright, that's something that you couldn't always say about Wolverhampton Wanderers, who not that long ago, maybe a generation ago, could have gone out of business. They dropped to the fourth tier of English football. Well, in really developing Molyneux, they caused themselves a lot of problems, didn't they? Only one stand built for a long period of time. Mud banks behind a couple of the goals for a while. Coming here. He'd reasonably plain sailing for Watford to reach this semi final. got to dig in. Mariapa. Right. There's the ball into feet again to Andre Gray, and he doesn't deal with it. And there is a problem, he loves running in behind, but Wolves aren't giving him the space to do that. Back three again. Pretty deep, because they know it doesn't really matter too much from Cody up to Jimenez, because Jimenez and Jota can play on their own. I mean, that last counter-attack when Jota ran 60, 70 yards with the ball, he did it at pace, but he did it with such composure as well. Great understanding where the space was. Here's uh, Pereira. Hughes. Just out to Jean Moutinho. by uh, Mariapa. It's the first half scoreline, which may not reflect the, the territorial spread of the game 
But it does reflect the, the sense we've had, Stuart, that Wolves carried a greater threat. Yeah, Watford have had more possession, they've had the territorial advantage, but, as you said, Wolves have looked the more threatening side when they have got it into the top third of the field. Here's a chance for Fat in the air to get the cross in. And Dini turns away in disappointment. Dofty, the goal scorer, has got to make sure it's not coming back in again from the opposite flank. And he has been able to do that to the consternation of Holly Bass. I would still say, though, that Watford had a, a golden opportunity when that ball was bent into Andre Gray. If he goes with his head, he has to score. I'm not sure why he went with his foot. Andre Mariner holds up the, uh, the board. Two added minutes. We're into now. Coming here. I'm sure we'll see De La Feu. But, uh, question of when. And here is the chance for Gray. Brilliantly set up by Dini. The top two for Watford in tandem there. And Wolves didn't have an answer till the very end. Ball played in, Hughes, there's a the little header back. His first touch is OK, but he slices his shot, and it's Connor Cody that gets the block in. That's a front two playing at their very best. That's what you want if you're going to play with a front two. Dini winning the ball, setting up his fellow centre forward, but he doesn't make the perfect connection, and good defending from Cody eventually. Harris Southgate, Steve Holland with him. Viewing the occasion, and of course the English players on view. The outswinger, Decore leaves it because Hughes who wants to get it onto his left foot. Now Decore, strong finish as Watford try and seek an equaliser before half time. They've got another corner. They just thought that Will Hughes could have bent that one in first time, got it into the danger area again. A number of set pieces that Watford have had, corners and free kicks in threatening areas. And Nuno Espirito Santo is hoping his team can see off, which will surely be the last one before half time, and go in with a 1 0 lead. Combination of zonal and man marking from Wolves. And by Hollibas again, the goalkeeper's pinned. So that's the last act of the first half. And although Watford have, to some extent, called the tune, it's Wolverhampton Wanderers who hold the advantage. Matt Doherty from a very cleverly arranged and manufactured set-piece routine. He threw his head at it. Andre Gray didn't throw his head at a, a chance and had another one after the Doherty goal, which could have been the equaliser, but he did have an opportunity to put Watford in front. But at the break at Wembley, it's Watford nil. Wolves won. Certainly no change in personnel. I wonder if we get a change in tactics from Watford at the start of this second half. Slight uh, problem, a bit of deep heat maybe for Raul Jimenez. And we're underway. Second semi-final, remember. Manchester City already through the first. If you're not totally au fait with the regulation of the competition, replay is a, a long forgotten part of this round of the Cup. 20 years since the last one, and the FA decided that they should be settled on the day. The replay bout out in real style, a famous win for Manchester United over Arsenal, and a famous Ryan Giggs goal, the last ever FA Cup semi final goal, or well, semi final replay goal, was an appropriate one. Brilliance and beauty. So it has to be settled here. We can have extra time. And then, of course, it would go to penalties. It was a big feeling, Stuart, before the game, given the uh, proximity in the league table of these two sides, that extra time would be uh, more of a probability than a possibility. Still could be the case. There hasn't been a change of tactics for... Watford still playing with Pereira at the top of a diamond, so nothing for Nuno Espirito Santo to worry about so far in terms of 
he have to change anything himself? It is Pereira who uh, tried to get away, but gave the ball away, then gave the free kick away. Yeah, he's at times been the most inspirational player, but he knew exactly what he was doing there. He's lucky not to get a yellow card for that. Pereira. to Doherty. Nice take by João Moutinho. Wasn't a routine one. Here's Bully. Maybe hoping to hustle a mistake out of Cody and then Roddy. Saiz and the flag has stayed down and Jimenez gets away, gets the shot away too. Didn't catch Gomez out. That's what he can do. He's quick, he's direct and he's not short of confidence. That was a great pass from Saiz. He's left but he's playing on the right-hand side of that back three but he uses his left foot more than he does his right. Played the ball over the top. Then Donka had that shot that was deflected in the first half that brought a fine save, save out of Gomez. Doherty lets it run, thinking Jimenez might get there. Olivas had other ideas. Pereira. might suit Watford and it's hard to do deliberately but let Watford come onto them and uh, Wolves come onto them a little bit so there might be more space for Gray to run in behind back three drops off again though as Femenia comes forward Keep it. So what to get it back through the efforts of Hughes. Jota. It's a clever run forward by uh, Jean Moutinho, but the pass didn't recognise that from Bolly. That was certainly the pass. Moutinho saw the space to run into. Hughes. Goal. If we get one, it would be absolutely vital. If uh, Wolves get it, you feel that would be a uh, place in the final for them. But if Watford get it, with Dini and Gray about, there's still plenty of possibilities for that. Starting to see a turnaround. Yeah, starting to see the Kure make more runs. Here's the ball over the top. He wasn't offside, he's onside. Good decision by the assistant. Mariapu was playing the onside. Now he's racing towards goal. Gets the ball stuck under his feet slightly, but still gets a good shot away. Kapu, the holding midfield player, that is the player getting back at him. Nice height for Gomez. Gomez, of course, came to Watford from the Spurs, where he had a very decent career. Here's Jota for Jimenez! And it, uh, actually, one or two of the Watford defenders sort of gave that up, expecting Gomez to get it. And Jota suddenly saw the possibilities, challenging the goalkeeper with the front two in tandem again. A point you made right at the start, Stuart, about both sides playing two up front and the combinations at each end of the pitch. Didn't hold the key here as Dini tries to slide it into Pereira that time. Now Hughes in towards Gray. Dini stopped by Bolly. Jota, a real nuisance. Ball away, which some days leads to a yellow card. Maybe Michael Oliver thinking he did hear the whistle with the noise, but I think he did. I'm not sure he does too much wrong. Hughes. Coming here. Now 
Cathcart. Just started to switch play that little bit quicker. Femenia got lots of time to deliver this ball into the box. Wasn't the best delivery, asked a fair bit of Hughes. The Ducure made a run in between the central defenders. Might have been on for something that uh, is a bit more elevated. They had two coming onto the same ball there. Which uh, was frustrating for both Ducure and Hughes, who got rather in each other's way. Here's the ball played forward. They win the first one in the air. No surprise, Troy Deeney. Hughes and Decore both going for the same ball, but they are looking more threatening now. They're getting the ball out into the wide areas a bit quicker. They're going to get crosses into the box. Decore is playing further forward, almost playing as a third centre forward at times when the ball goes into wide areas. But the threat will also be at the other end with the counter attacks from Wolves. I think that's how the second half is going to be played all the time. It's 1 0. Now, by say he's played in the World Cup for. Morocco. Jimenez, Mexican World Cup player, of course. Then Donker was in the Belgium squad, played against England. Javi Gracia has never been to a final as a coach. Oh, and Dini changed his mind. He was going to strike it for goal, then he saw that Gray may have been free and just tried to hold back his shot, pass it into Gray, but it wasn't a good pass. Just there he was going to think about it, overhit it. And giving his usual round of interviews in the build-up to the game, Troy Dini, offers player spokesman, which he admitted he didn't. As a kid wanted to be a footballer, he wanted to be a fireman. It's a Wolves fire that he's got to try and put out here. Because they lead the semi-final by a goal to nil. Matt Doherty close to half-time. A cleverly worked set-piece. Jota. He gives defenders not a moment's peace. Ray Cathcart. Booked for this. Does well. Jota gets his foot in the way. Then he grabs hold of his arm, Cathcart, and then has another grab at him. The referee's absolutely right, but it's excellent centre forward play from Jota. Up against the bigger Cathcart, making a real nuisance of himself. Once he got to the ball first, it was always going to be difficult for the centre back. Well, what are they going to use from their considerable repertoire this time? Wolves, Neves, and Moutinho. Just taken a word of advice from the manager. Both of them looked round, the manager shouted something out, he's called the tune here. Might be telling Neves to have a shot. That's what he does. Oh, and it was a bit of one thing and not quite the other either. It was a curving ball that might have found its way directly in, but it might have put it on ahead as a mirror image of the goal they've scored. Oh, what a good delivery that is. He's trying to whip it with pace. Inside that far post. It's by far the more demonstrative of the two managers. Saiz was the player that was closest to it. It was the one negative for Wolves at the moment. Two of their players. Except that Neves has been booked, so has Saiz. Just under a bit of pressure. Holding midfield player and a centre half, they're going to have to make challenges at some point in the game. Here's Pereira to avoid the challenges. How often have we seen games changed by a team going down to ten men? Many are playing a part here. Now Hughes, just understandably tense. Delicate touches required. What can press on again? They beat Wolves with a, a show of power at Molyneux in October. Just feel they need a little bit more finesse in these circumstances. They've got a free kick. 
Well, they're going for power by getting the ball into the box. They're using their powerful midfield player, the Cure, to get in there, and Troy Deeney. Then that's when they need the little bit of finesse, the composure right at the end of it. That hasn't been the case so far. Deeney did score in the semi-final here three years ago when they were beaten 2-1 by Crystal Palace. Herrera to take the free kick. Watford have plenty of height. Plenty of height. Not, in the end, enough for Deeney to be able to guide it on target. And he's so good at hanging in the air this time and judging the ball, the flight of the ball. Can't quite get above it. He's up against bigger players most of the time, but still wins those balls in the air, Troy Deeney. Calling for more. I think whistling for more. Polybas. Switch of plays on. It's back to Mariapa. Pereira. To carve a pass that needed a, a good run. And got it. But from Andre Gray. Quite sure what was in his mind then. Good run from him. There was space in behind on this occasion. Makes the run in behind Saiz, but there's that lack of composure, that lack of finesse that Watford has shown throughout this game so far. Scored in the fourth round and a, a crucial goal to beat Crystal Palace in the quarter final. Jimenez. Lovely turn by Jimenez. Jota. Again, a constant source of trouble to Watford at the back. And he's a young player too, 22. And you do feel he's going to have a big influence for this club. And indeed, when he gets into the Portugal team. A big summer coming up, of course, they're hosting the new Nations League semi-finals and final. Actually have a good start to their European qualifying campaign. Two draws at home. Now, are we going to see this man come onto the field? Not at the moment, we're not. Well, it's the... Uh, Cry of shoot, shoot, shoot every time uh, Ruben Neves gets within his range, which is probably further out than most players' range, but he didn't connect properly this time. Slices off the outside of his boot. He had a lot of the ball, Femenia. And the player that has to go out and challenge him at times is Martini. I'm not sure he's going to be able to do that for the rest of the game. It's tucked in in midfield, and when it gets spread, this time Johnny's going out to Femenia. So Mariapa tries a different route, tosses it up for Dini to fight for. And uh, even if a defender gets there, it might drop Watford's way. Femenia again. And again. Well, he was drawn out of position trying to get the ball, he committed himself. He's back in position now as Hollybass curls it in and he needed to be to get a touch but the danger hasn't passed for Wolves yet being challenged by crosses from left and right looking to counter attack and uh, Jota is never shy of doing that and Michael Oliver is reaching the yellow card again for Oli Basso had to take one for the team as they say brilliant from that man again Coutinho does well on the edge of the box, he's still got close, he gets a bit of luck here, comes back in his favour, Holly Bass is trying to get back at him, gets across him, and there's only going to be one outcome, a foul and a yellow card. And the rant from Nuno Espirito Santo was thinking if he gets the ball to Jimenez then Wolves might have a bit of daylight. But Jota's, he's not a flashy 
person to look at. He looks very boyish. Look as though he would carry the threat in a game like this. And he obviously does. He's been outstanding again. In by Doherty. Looking for Jimenez, who might be able to get it down and does! 2-0 to Wolves! And their main man, the man from Mexico, now the masked crusader. Looks like that crusade is going to take Wolves back here for the FA Cup final. But that is typical of what he's done in his first season in English football. Magnificent. He's standing in an offside position. Gets himself back, I think, just onside. I think the boot of the defender was keeping him onside. Great first touch. Judge the flight of the ball and then the volley as well. Magnificent from a centre forward. It's been instrumental in most of the good things that Wolves have done this season. But it is going to VAR. All depends whether that defender's foot was playing him onside. It's a tight one, a really tight one. Certainly no handball. It's not what they should be looking at. It's the offside. The goal is given, and rightly so. And Wolves with that crucial second goal. And Watford have got half an hour now to try and sort this out. They've had a sniff of a chance straight away. But you also have to remember how they got down from one end of the field to the other. It was by Jota's run, winning the free kick, and from that free kick, that man there scores the goal. But look where he's standing, Stuart. I noticed that at the start, because obviously he's not going to stay in there. And, and that little, when they changed the angle to move back... And it was the defender's left boot that was just playing him onside. Femenia, but what technique. Judgment of the flight of the ball. Mariapa gets caught underneath it. Gets the other side of... Femenia, and before Gomez can get there, it's the brilliant finish. That's well, the fourth round of the FA Cup that he scored in. in. His first taste of the competition, what an impact he's made. There you see that foot of the defender. Shows what a good decision it was by the assistant referee in the first place. going to be uh, a call for De La Feu now, but has the horse bolted? I don't think it's going to be for Andre Gray, I think it's going to be for Will Hughes, who's actually been delivering a lot of the crosses into the box. But it is a story of set pieces so far. Wonderful work on the training ground by Nuno and his coaching staff, there's another one, and Bolly's coming in, but that's claimed by Gomez. And I just wonder, Stuart, because uh, Nuno, a former goalkeeper, whether he brings a different take to the set-piece routines as to what would trouble a goalkeeper most. Different angle on the set plays. I think it's also about... People mark very well from the first ball, but when it gets moved, yeah. they then lose their Both men. goals from second yeah. balls, yeah. So it's Will Hughes off. Gerard De Lufeu on with a, a tall order. He's been playing through the middle, but he's also, of course, known as a, a right-sided player, right winger. And that's where he's been posted as a direct replacement for Hughes, but a very different type of player. by Kafka. Look from Dendonka. Here is Jota again. He doesn't get it right this time. Decore. Bailefeu. Chance for a cross from the Femenia. Wolves are aware of that. Force him back. Gray in the middle. Kure in the middle, Dini in the middle. The 
All a bit too slow from Watford. They've got to switch the play quicker. Looks as though Hollybass has almost gone to a left wing position. As Cathcart's going to have to defend a big area on his left hand side. Coming here again. There's a chance for maybe delivery into the box. And a fail. Can't get it in, and there's a bit of an argy bargy here with Jean Moutinho. Whether that's from today or a bit of previous. Johnny is a fellow Spaniard trying to calm De La Feu down, and Michael Oliver saying, What's going on here? Where did that come from? It's just being told to wait by the VAR here. Just holding up the plate as to whether there was an offence. It might be a red card. Had this yesterday. Kyle Walker incident. It's uh, no red card. Now here come uh, Wolves again. Oh, Jimenez is just a little bit lax. And this time, uh, Jota couldn't be found. Holibas into Ducouré. Cathcart, plenty of possession for Watford, but not in dangerous areas. It's uh, a bit more of what's required, really. I'm mean, call it Route 1 or what you will. Gray's header from a fair way out. It's too far off the target. Here's the goal again. There you see that left boot. Certainly no handball there. It's a brilliant first touch. And what he does, he takes it early before the Kure can get there. And before Gomez. A flamboyant goal from Raul Jimenez. Takes a heavy fall here. And then career and into the challenge. Jimenez. Kick has been given to Watford. Well, the longer the game has gone on, the more possession Watford have had, but the more that Wolves look a threat on the counter. What an acquisition he has been. It's a very different lifestyle living in Wolverhampton to. His uh, adulation in other countries that he's played in. And if he doesn't want to be recognised, he can always put the mask on. Yeah. He might be more recognised for <laughs> that. <laughs> Wolves try to break again. Capu. Doherty heads it down, Jimenez is off, Wolves are off again. Doherty to his right, two uh, goal scorers combined. In comes Jota, knocked away by Capu, who's labouring a bit. Now Dendonka. Doherty. Twenty minutes to go, unless Watford can come up with one of the great semi-final comebacks. At the moment, it doesn't look particularly likely. Just looking at the body language of some of the Watford players. Body language of the manager, that's how he usually stands, mind you. You saw that firsthand when I you did. were assistant manager Woken in the very first round, the third round. I was about three yards from him throughout the 90 minutes, and he he hardly blinked even when they scored. <laughs> and it, it, was, it was a pleasure, once in a lifetime experience for me, I'm sure. But didn't give a, a flavour of what Watford 
were about. And they conducted themselves very well on the day, off the field as well as Zorich, I must say. There's a bit of a link between the two clubs. Here is uh, De Lefeu. He didn't play in that one. Good defending, Bully saw the danger. Tried to usher it out. Came away with it. Another foul from a Watford player on Jota. Well, they take nothing for granted. They've, especially the older fans, have seen some very harrowing and harsh times. Wolverhampton Wanderers. But he is leading the revival. Was at a game, a semi final game where Wolves played against Spurs in 1981. The second, the replay it was, it was in those Highbury. days at Highbury. Yep. There was 50,000 Tottenham supporters there, only 5,000 Wolves. It seemed and an I injustice think, that the game was being played at Highbury. I think uh, Tottenham win 3 0, something like that, to they go did. to the final. To traffic, Furrow gets it back, finds a bit of space. Delefeu, right, get it in. It's all for Doherty and for Ruddy, who takes charge pretty calmly too. But actually, so that's good defending from Doherty. By heading the ball up in the air, it gave the goalkeeper a chance to come out and deal with it. He's trying to get into the box to Kure as much as possible. Scored in the last uh, two league games for Watford. Brilliant one against Manchester United. It's their joint second high scorer to Dini, along with Gray. And they're all on the pitch now. With De La Feu as well. But here is. Diogo Jota, who will run and run. And he took some stopping. He's not explosively quick, but he is definitely persistent. Mariapa just about got there. Hermanier wasn't going to get back at him. He has a little look, he's looking up two or three times, he knows where the space is. Mariapa shows good strength as well, just holding off the challenge of Jota. He gets Wolves up the pitch, and uh, the more they can play in the attacking third in the just over 15 minutes to go. So you talked about their defensive record and being well organised. Part of that is because the front two are so good on the counter attack, so they can keep their shape in midfield. They can keep their back three together. And here is uh, Jimenez. Oh, and Doherty's in. I was going to say for another one, but his first touch took that opportunity away. What a pass it was to him. His first touch let him down. Good work from Hollybass for Watford. They need some inspiration here. They've had a lot of perspiration. And it's led to nothing against their name on the scoreline. Dini's in there. And while there's Dini, there's always a chance of Decore coming round the back. Going for it again. Here's De La Feu inside the penalty area where they've got to be careful not to touch him. Wolves clear, only momentarily. Back with Hollibas. Sustained pressure here from Watford. There was a ball on, a deeper ball to Troy Dini that time. But look at Jota. He's a one man army. Uh, Lieutenant Jimenez is there for the general of the counter-attack. The game very spread at the moment. This might just suit Watford to find a gap or two. But they need a goal and two. Well then, by Holibas, to Kure. Just took a fraction of a second too long. A touch from Kapu. 
De La Feu with a bit of wriggle room. Comes out to Hollibas, hard and low and very dangerous and very well defended. Jimenez can't hold it up, he's annoyed with himself. Watford giving it everything at the moment as they absolutely have to. A couple of really good crosses from Hollybass on this near side. Delefeo has come out here now, but that looks to be the threat. Balls into the box from wide areas. Not sure they're going to play through walls. They're going to have to go round them and get crosses in. Delefeo, as you say, recognising that from the left. Wants it back again. Half-hearted Watford shouts. Thing about. Uh, Troy Deeney, he will not give it up. He lives and breathes Watford Football Club. He's got a fairly long throw, Holly Bass. But it comes into that category fairly long. Maybe the needs will get extra strength into those biceps. And certainly, Deeney... Off getting it, De La Feu, oh, brilliant! That's the inspiration that they needed, and Watford aren't out of it yet. Quite an impact from the substitute, who was left out of the starting lineup quite controversially, but a brilliant semi-final goal, Watford won the Wolves two. And nothing he could do about it. Ruddy, the long throw comes in, he's got a lot of time on the ball here. He has a little lock, they don't get tight enough, and he just bends it round the first player, Mendonca, then Donka, and into that far corner. Then Donka has to get a lot tighter. What a finish. And what an end to the game we're going to have now. Deliberate, deft, delightful. De La Feu. about as passionate as he gets, Javi Gracia. But if they get an equaliser, that uh, might be a, an understatement. Here's uh, Decore. Has he got a corner out of it? No. But you have to admire the way Watford have come back into it. A great spell it. of pressure, wasn't it? Really good spell of pressure. Getting the ball out wide, crosses into the box, players getting into the box, getting into Troy Deeney's feet so the players can run off of him. They've taken one or two gambles at the back. He's made a difference, Delafoe, with that goal. And we'll see it through. Bass, whose long throw did set up the chance, not directly, but the second ball. Solibas's cross for Dini to attack. Here's Pereira, who's done very well to last this long. Not for press again. In another corner. Well, they start to believe now, don't they? Those Watford fans were looking down and out a little while ago. Wolves yeah. want to make another substitution. They wanted to get another big player on to take off one of their central midfield players. Great cap car scored at this end of the stadium in the game here against Tottenham in January in the Premier League. That was, in the end, though, a 2-1 defeat. They're losing 2-1 at Wembley again, but there's still time this time. Wicked corner. I think it'll be another one. Will bend on it from Holly Bass. It's going to be another in swinger from a right footer this time, De La Feu. Is it going to be his day? A 
turn the tide. Which is certainly flowing away from Watford. Jota, but not very far. Lefeo again. When he's good, he's very good. Here goes Capu. Beanie in the middle. Gray's there. Decore on the move. Here, here he is. On for Dini to fight for. And he gets a touch. Holibas. Blocked. By Saiz. Ryan Bennett still waiting to come on. You don't usually make a substitution when you're defending a set play, and that's what Wolves are thinking at the moment. There's going to be an outswinger from Holly Bass this time. It's not deep enough, Jimenez heads away. Pass is there again. Played in the cup finals in Greece. Here's uh, Pereira. And Watford reach the cup final at Wembley next month. Still got a fair bit to do. Delefeu again. Elena scrapes it from him. Delefeu thought he was fouled. But Watford uh, penning Wolves in at the moment. Height of Dendonka are useful in those situations. Trying to play their way forward. Jimenez giving them a bit of width. Doherty. Going for it uh, inside, but Doherty can go on himself. Matt Doherty again. And it was uh, a vital touch from Femenia. Comes out to Jao Martinho. Doherty still in the centre. Jota couldn't get it across to him. Could he have swung his left boot at it, yeah. Doherty? Once he'd come inside. Really good play to start with from him. Along with Jimenez. You do feel that the, the way to see it out for Wolves here is to play it with a little bit more attacking emphasis, but obviously, and understandably, they're dropping in. And almost saying, well, what is it? Six minutes plus stoppage time to go. Come and get another one if you can, but they might just do that. Watford. That's a free kick. The tempo of the game has not dropped. If anything, it's increased in the second half. It certainly has. Here comes that substitution. substitution. They've changed their plans. It's certainly Ruben Neves who was going off. There's Ryan Bennett, who is going to come on, that was the move you were talking about, a, a defender for a midfield player. Right. It's going to be a double switch as well. Because, uh, it's Bennett anyway, the former Norwich player. And Ivan Cavallero is getting ready too, but he's not on yet. Saïs has gone into a holding midfield role. And Bennett, ha Bennett has been the first choice right side of the back three for most of the season, but he had a, a suspension. Saïs came in and did well. Saïs has been uh, more involved in the early months of the season in the role that he's now occupying. Here's Dendonka. Martini uh, caught in possession. That going to be costly. It might be. Martini couldn't get it back. The ball stays in play, Femenia's cross, and Ruddy to the rescue again.
Good goalkeeping, Ruddy. Came and made it his. It was a decent ball played into the box. It wasn't the perfect catch, but he farmed it into a good position for himself. Certainly been a brilliant last 20 minutes to the game. Since Wolves went 2 0 up, really. Well, Watford had that spell, and you wonder, well, if you don't score when you have a spell like that, then really it does go to waste. But they did score. Yeah. Put a fight back, back on the agenda. Still on that agenda. Wolves are worried that they're leading at Wembley. Taylor Fayou. And again, comes out Hollibus. Watford's point of view, it wasn't what was required. Good play, Delafeo down that right hand side. Clever little one two with Pereira. Wasn't a bad ball played in. And he sets himself, but gets it all wrong, Hollywood. Big chance. Even with his substitutions, you know, Espirito Santo rarely goes out and side a, a group of 14 to 15 players. Uh, Cavalero, who has also contributed to this FA Cup charge to the semi-final. Scored uh, the winner at Bristol City, scored the crucial goal too against Shrewsbury in the replay. Jot has been superb. Now replaced. Cathcart. Capu. Measure one. Maldini to flick on. The Corre is there. So too is uh, Pereira. He's done very well to still be playing with that hip problem. And Hollibas gets past Doherty. Watford could be in here. And still could be in here. Gray. Capu. And Free kick. No, it's not a free kick. It's a throw. But uh, Bolly is expecting to get the chance to clear his lines there from a dead ball, but that's not the case. And the drama continues into the 90th minute in the second semi final. Maybe we'll go beyond into extra time if Watford can. Ooh, that, that will be a foul this time. Dini. Uh, Den Donker. Uh, not too impressed with Den Donker's reaction, but I think he was responsible for it. Yeah, Dini knows he's going to try and win the ball, but he's not actually trying to fail Den Donker, he's trying to block it. And Den Donker does really well by lifting the ball over his foot. Well, the ball is up and it's got a number four on it. I do think it's been one of the great, relatively recent inventions, Stuart, to let everybody know how long there is, yep. like, rather than just leaving it to what the referee kept to himself. Here's De La Feu. Pulled it up in the air, no more than that by Holly Bass, and it is more than that, because it dropped for De Coure. Again, the two strikers in the centre. They need more than throw. two strikers in the yeah. centre. The Kuro's out in the wider. He's got to be making runs into the box. First time by Kapu. Dini trying to get to it. Maybe the clearer path for those coming in from behind. They've been penalised. And the first minute of added time has passed. And he probably might claim he was shoved slightly. That that's what knocked him into Dendonka. But they've really had a go, haven't they, the last 20, 25 minutes, Watford. They've got lots of crosses into the box. They've got the ball into the top third of the field time and time again. But at the moment, it's the Wolves supporters that are happier. Well, I think the world expected between uh, these two clubs are very competitive. 
FA Cup semi-final, and that's what we've got. Here is Decore. Dini jogs into the penalty area again. De La Feu. And again. Decore. Dini. Oh, down he goes. Michael Oliver said penalty. A penalty in the 92nd minute for Watford. It will be reviewed. But it looked a pretty good shout to me. Well, he was always going to get across the front of Den Donk here. That's all he was looking for. It's a good first touch. I'm not sure Den Donker actually sticks a leg out. Let's have another look. Yes, he does. And he catches Troy Deeney. I'm sure that's going to be a penalty. It's been awarded. I'm not sure VAR will change that. They are checking. Michael Oliver awaits the verdict. Connor Cody throws his two penneth in, but it won't count for anything. The crowd really holds its breath. He was in a great position as well, the referee, Michael Oliver. It's got to be a clear and obvious error, hasn't yep. it? And Donker was the defensive player. He certainly thought about it, he had a look, he had a look, he took his time and then pointed to the spot. Penalty it is. And what a moment for a man who's been through so much as a Watford player. It all rests on those square shoulders of Troy Deeney. Watford's captain fantastic. John Ruddy can make himself a Wolves legend here. Deeney is the recognised penalty taker. He usually goes for power. Such drama in the second semi-final. This goes in and we go to extra time. And in it goes, Deeney delivers in one of the big moments of a great Watford career. And you can see what it means. It's D-Day for the club just up the road. De La Feu, then Dini, and that 2-0 Wolves lead has gone up in a puff of smoke. Well, you said he was going to hit it with power, and he certainly did that. He goes over the top of Ruddy, Ruddy chooses the right way, but he hits it powerfully enough and high enough. Ooh, he just can't get his left arm up quickly enough, and Ruddy... And we're probably going to extra time, but what a comeback we've seen from Watford. Fantastic fighting spirit. And he calls the penalty and converted the penalty. He knew as soon as he was running across Dendonka that Dendonka didn't know he was coming. He was going to go for the ball. If he, if he could get there first, there was always going to be that chance. Well, we talked, Stuart, about Watford uh, forcing the pressure. Maybe Wolves inviting a bit of pressure. And remember, they haven't got Jota on the field now. They have Doherty. Cavalero. It is extra time. A superb semi-final between two of the country's most improved teams this season. But what an improvement for Watford in the closing stages here. And Dini thrashed home the penalty. Doherty scored in the first half. Jimenez in the second half, it seemed to be enough for Wolves. But then De La Feu came on and made a difference. And then it was all down to that added time penalty. And it's 2-2 after 90 minutes. I'm de delighted to say, on we go. We're ready to go with extra time, which does bring one other factor into play. A fourth substitute can be used. It's a relatively new regulation, and it was first brought into play in an FA Cup semi-final. Kelechi Iheanacho came on for Manchester City a couple of years ago against Arsenal. Well, Watford with, a, I guess, a very popular football word at the moment. Stuart, momentum. 
Certainly they got their tactics right in the last part of that game. Not sure Wolves did. Started to sit deep, they allowed space out wide. They weren't worried about crosses coming in. They thought they would defend them when they came into the box. But eventually the pressure told. Wolves have got to pick themselves up again. Talk about that full substitution that either side can make. What you can't do is bring off a, bring back a player that you've taken off. And I'm sure they'd love to bring Jota back on. They've still got Jimenez. Decore. From uh, the Wolves' perspective, Conor Cody, the captain, and you know, Espirito Santo, the manager, have just had to, surely, in that conversation between uh, Ian, the regulation time, the start of extra time, to clear their heads and just start again, try and uh, win this extra period and get to the FA Cup final in doing so. 2 2. Wolves were 2 0 up. Pereira. I say using a fourth sub. We haven't got down to the third ones yet. So. There's plenty of scope for change. You'd be wondering what might have been so close. Cavalero. The, the changes. The other. Flick by Jimenez. It's this a chance, actually, to catch Watford a bit back on their heels, then. But here's the quick running of Dele Feu, supported by De Cura, whose athleticism may well count. In the demands of the extra period. Matched by Bolly. More than matched by Bolly on that occasion. Yeah. Really good defending. Then he broke forward, picked out a pass. Shows a bit of composure on the ball. And finds Johnny. Here's Cavallero. It's goalkeeper's ball. Dini. Breaks for Cavallero again. It's a clever pass. And, uh, what for quarter a bit lacking, and when Doherty breaks forward, it's caused a lot of problems. Cavallero, Jimenez, and here's Johnny. First chance of the added period. He went for power. But Gomez was equal to it. Good ball played by Jimenez. Just slices across it. Just gets the fingertips on it. There's Gomez. have been threatening from set plays. This time they're lining up together on the edge of the box now, they're slightly changed. Trying to get someone in free with a, a block in there, the goalkeeper comes and does very well. At the moment I think Dukure thought he could get there, but he's been outmaneuvered by Johnny. Cavalero, Jean Martinho. Cavalero can uh, let fly with his right foot, he's capable of doing that, but in the end he decided to involve uh, Doherty. And Cavalero's come on to it. It's just blocked. And uh, the collision was a painful one for Holobas. I think he's actually pulled his hands. I think that's what he's trying to say to the players around him. Cavalero, first bit of impact he's had on the game. He's going to try and drag the ball back across Olibas. Olibas read it and just pulled up there. And you can see it holding the back of his right leg. That will probably be the end of the Greek international. Got uh, Adam Messina is a, a left back, but a relatively inexperienced one. 
But there he is. He uh, played left back at the start of the FA Cup run in the game at Woking. Now just checking whether it's cramp or a hamstring, I guess. Yeah, I think whatever it is, you need to get him off fairly quickly. Well, he's got to be pleased with his team's reaction. The Grazia. They look down and out, got themselves back into it. The substitution made a difference, Delafeo. Ooh, sat that much deeper, they allowed space out wide. They were able to get easy crosses in. This man delivered a lot of good crosses into the box, Olivas. He missed a golden opportunity with his left foot, with a strike. Of course, he's had a decent game. The long throw as well. And, uh, well. He hasn't given up on it yet. I think he's just saying to the, the bench, hang on for a minute. Well, I'm not sure you can hang on for a minute. Give it a go. He's a tough character. He's an instant career when he was young. A very promising footballer. He gave it up because uh, he wasn't earning enough money to support his family and went and worked in a supermarket. And then found that he got enough ability to make a, a professional, a lucrative professional career. So he's worked very hard for everything that he's got and he's not going to give up on a FA Cup semi-final, he was left out actually in 2016, he was a Watford player then, but he'd fallen out with the then manager, Kike Sanchez Flores. I'll be very surprised if he does last much longer, he's just had a little chat, he's limping forward. And he's no, gone down. That's always the sign, isn't it? Go down and we can make the change. But here's somebody with power and pace, a damn try, all right. Getting ready for Wolves. There's no way Holly Bass would want to be facing him in that condition. He may have just looked across at the, <laughs> the <laughs> dugout and seen that he's coming on, coming, coming off. Yeah. There it is. A straight swap. That's why uh, managers will always say, I want two good players for each position. And uh, the senior is the junior left back, but he's got a senior role here now. Watford's ball. I think it's been disappointed from Watford in this first eight minutes of added or extra time. They were, as you said, with all the momentum going their way, they were getting crosses in, they were attacking, they were playing the game in Wolves' half. That hasn't been the case since we had the start of extra time. It's the psych psychology as much as the physiology, isn't it? Because you're chasing, you're chasing, you've got there to where you are, now you're, you're back at it again, if you're letting another one. <laughs> Um, slightly uh, softer approach from Javi Gracia's men. Been a few uh, previous FA Cup semi finals that have been decided by penalties. But we're not there yet. Bennett heads away. Decore. And it clears. Gomez has to scurry a little bit, slightly under hit by Cathcart. Giamatinho. Cavalero giving chase. The situation well dealt with by Craig Cathcart. And he looks the finished player on the pitch to Kuro. Trying to keep that tempo up for Watford. On one occasion, Deeney, rather than cross the ball into the box, where he had two or three players making runs, he tried to switch the play. That being the last minutes of normal time, he'd have crossed the ball into the box and put Wolves under a bit of pressure. 
by the fire. And it is Decoro who's in there. Dalefeo cushions it. Taylor will give and go. And Wolves starting to go. And, uh, this is yellow card, Etienne Capu. Stopping that potential counter attack. Uh, giving the ball away here, Dini can't get hold of it. Stomka knocks it past Kapu. Uh, another change. Oh, it is who goes off for Adama Traore. Who is a threat, but at times looks more of a. a a player of promise and a player of uh, actual achievement. This will be a good time to get some uh, end product to his work. It's given away by a weary Pereira. Johnny. Now, Cavalero. Is there going to be a fifth goal in this FA Cup semi-final? Throw all right. In his first involvement. Not sure who he was crossing that to. That was anywhere will do. The first defender. I saw a lot of him as a Barcelona youth player. And he would tear past opponents, get crosses in when he was 16, 17. Hasn't quite fulfilled his potential. Crowded out there. He's been in uh, English football for a little while now. Aston Villa and Middlesbrough. Now Wolves. Coming towards the end of the first period of extra time. I think he's just saying to the front players, we're not going to play as a front two. Mayonnaise will go higher. Valero just playing in the role slightly behind him. One off one, it wasn't the case of getting the score wrong. But, uh, maybe Watford's uh, best opportunity in this first period of extra time. De La Feo, it's more than an opportunity. From 2 0 down, they lead 3 2. He's got two of the three. It's incredible. The Hornets have really come out stinging. Well, we talked about the counter-attacking ability of Jota. That's De La Feo at his very best. Great pace. Didn't look as though he was going to get onto the end of that. But he did, and he got his touch past the defender and then passed it into the corner. What a finish that was from De La Feo. Here's the build-up play. Gray passes it. The De La Feo, best bit of play from Gray, another good pass, Cody can't get there, and nor can Ruddy. What pace and what composure at the end of it. So this De La touch, Feo, the touch that takes him past Cody, is vital, because it gives him the chance to stick it away. And I think Ruddy's caught by surprise how quickly he took it. You won't see Javi Gracia going down the touchline, sliding on his knees, but for him, that's a very extrovert moment. Well, what have Wolves got in the tank now? Three to Watford. All right, it's away. time can be tight and tense but when they're not they can be full of goals and he needs at least one to take it to a shootout
going to be the long throw from Bennett. Bolly is up. Yeah, Gomez has taken quite an advanced position, actually, just out of your picture. He wants to go and get it. He's not leaving it, but he doesn't go for it. Bolly does. It's only half away. But Watford could be away. De La Feu. Here's Gray. The Corre's in the middle. De La Feu. He's on a hat trick. A hat trick is a substitute in an FA Cup semi final. And he's uh, done it beautifully here for Femenia. And he's proved a point, hasn't he, De La Feu? You should have started with me. What a kick that is from Ruddy. There's still time before half time. In extra time for Jimenez. Corner. Brilliant defending. Mariapa, you can see what that means to him, 1v1, Jimenez running into the box, if he gets it wrong it's a penalty, he didn't get it wrong, brilliant tackle. What a game. Wembley rocking, Watford were rocking, out comes Gomez. Of real authority, and that should take Watford to half time. The veteran Brazilian, very, very popular figure, and he's done hung on for long enough. Can Watford now hang on to the lead that they've got in his first period of extra time through this enigmatic player? When he's good, you're watching what he's like when he's good, he's superb, but there are Enough days when that doesn't happen, when he hardly contributes. That's the lows for today, the highs of Gerard De La Feu. That touch you talked about to take him beyond Connor Cody. And it bought him enough time just to show that composure with the finish. That is class. And that might just be a message to the manager. <laughs> He'll probably say, would you have done that if you'd started the game? To which the answer is, we'd have won 2-0, boss. But yeah. uh, that's football, it's the magic of management, the selection, getting it right. You know, Espirito Santo hardly ever changed his team. We had no doubts really in our minds, Stuart, when we arrived here today, how he would set up, how they would play. Now they've got to find a, a recipe for recovery. The, has already been found in the other conversation going on to uh, his right, our left. Here's the player that went off, Olivas. The two tired players, Pereira's done well to stay on the yeah. field as long as he has, he was a doubt for the game. Now what Watford mustn't do is now sit back, as Wolves did at the end of normal time. Dini got the other goal, of course, that dramatic penalty. Yeah. We have... Change on the uh, left hand side, Vinagra, who is a left wing back, That's where he's come on. Straight swap, Johnny's gone off. Well, you're watching one of the FA Cup semi finals that the new Wembley has staged. Manchester City, it was only 1 0 yesterday, but the goal after the four minutes, but there was never too much doubt that they would have too much for Brighton and Hove Albion. But this has ebbed and flowed. Now, Wolves have got to turn the tide in their direction. Traore is fouled. 
Now it's their turn to get the ball into the box as often as possible. All the big players they've got on the pitch at the moment are going to go into the... I'm saying the box, they're not going to quite drop off that deep, Watford, on this occasion. But I've got uh, Jimenez in that half uh, offside position again. So try and distract. All right, he's got three to try and stop him. And, uh, might have bounced back off Adama Traor, I don't know. Given us a corner anyway. There's those big players. Bully, the main target. Bennett now in there. Jimenez, player that scored the goal. Doherty. Over Jimenez. Only, uh, throwing himself. Trying to break out, and they might be able to do that here. De La Feu. The Gray with him. Andre Gray, the lad from Wolverhampton. Trying to spoil the occasion for all his friends and family from that part of the world. But the flag is up for offside. They're going to make a, another change. Watford, Daryl Yanmat. Who has played in a World Cup semi final, so uh, an FA Cup semi final should hold no terrors for him. Right back, Kiko Femenia. Who uh, was an integral part of the attacking side when. Watford really struggling to get any attacking play going. He was the outlet. He's covered a lot of ground, had a lot of touches. So the Dutch international comes on. <laughs> Never think it's easy for a defender to come on at this stage of the game when you're winning the game and you've got to make sure the scoreline stays the same. It's going to be up against. Valero at times. Dini, Kure, Gray going for it. Lovely take by Jimenez. It was brought down. The two players like Kapoor have got to be careful. They're on a yellow card. Yeah. In the benefit of the doubt on that occasion. Troll right. Take them on. Stopped by the gallant Pereira. Cleared by Messina. Dini did well. Gray, give it to De La Feu, should be the message. To Kure, who can get it back. Such a, a sapping occasion in FA Cup semi-final, emotionally, and then physically, if you have to go to extra time on a big pitch. Oh, and Gomez was in a bit of a hurry to get that second touch. He thought he might have presented it to Jimenez, but here's Doherty. Now Dendonker gave away the penalty. Saiz. Vinagre. Corner for Wolverhampton Wanderers. Villafoe yeah, wants some treatment, he's gone down. So they like tracksuit bottoms. They have got one more substitution left, the fourth one permitted in extra time. Just twisted his ankle there as he went to make the challenge. The right ankle. The referee said we're playing on. Uh, but not playing on till he blows the whistle. And he suspects that there's a bit of play acting going on. Corner for Wolves, 3-2 down. Having been 2-0 up at Wembley. Oh, 
goal kick. That was one moment where Gomez looked as though he was going to be slightly late on parade. Well, he comes together at exactly the same time, I think. Actually, Gomez punches it onto the head of Jimenez. This is a problem. One or two of the Watford players are questioning the attitude of De La Feo as well. Come on, we've only got to hang out for a few more minutes. But watch his right foot go to ground here, just twist it there. That's the problem he's got. That's a big call from the medical men. One or two of his own teammates are telling him to get on with it, come on. We need you. But they're not going to keep him. Because the man who's made the major impact coming on as a substitute now has to be substituted. Ken Semmer, the international from Sweden. He's a, a player of athletic ability, but not the individual talent that De Feu has. Few do have that, to be honest. The who came to Everton, of course, Roberto Martinez, one of his great champions. Went back to Barcelona, then came to Watford on loan, then was signed permanently. And a little spell at AC Milan as well. Bowling. Vinagre. That's the sort of thing that Sammer will do. He's going to play on the right-hand side. He's going to show that bit of discipline. Yeah, he's a, a left-sided player, technically, but he likes to play from the opposite flank. And, and Watford have won it back here, another one, and that will be curtains for Wolves. Materialised. Seven minutes plus added time to go. Doherty, Traore. Now Saiz in midfield. Traore. Jimenez wants a deep ball. Traore, I don't think it's seen him. He's got to, to the byline. He did very well to achieve that. Tied the cross in, but great hands by Gomez in the end. They're fearing the worst. Where he just let, lets himself down. Down the trail, all right. Great pace and ability to go past people, but the final pass isn't a good one. Football has this extraordinary capacity to reach the extremes of emotions. Despair can turn to delight in a, in a moment, and that's what. Wolves are looking for here. Willie Bowley has chipped in with a few goals this season. Makes his way forward. Not easy to miss, but he is difficult to mark. And it's over him. What for get it away? Jan Matt looks long. And all the he could do is just come out and boot it forward. But he, he had to boot it into play, take the risk. Sama. There are some exhausted players out there. I have to say, it's been exhausting watching it. <laughs> what a semi-final it's been. Walls looked as though they were home and dry. Watford despite their pressure, weren't really creating too many chances. No creativity or guile in and around the box. But how it's all changed. Seconds away, Wolves, when the whistle went for the penalty. Good to help run down the clock. 
absolutely shattered physically and pretty much emotionally as well. The, uh, the look in his eyes when he hammered in the penalty to take it to uh, extra time. Is there going to be another twist, a sting in the tail? Vinagra. Need to get it into the box. And he does so. Jimenez. And uh, just blocked off cleverly by Etienne Capu to allow Gomez to come out and take it. Vinagra did really well down the left hand side to get that cross in. But it was a tired Jimenez, unsurprisingly. He's worked so hard as the front player. He's touched on that occasion, just lets him down because it was good movement from him again. Pulled off the back of the centre half, got back across him. Traore. Run for Doherty has covered so much ground up and down the right hand side. Wembley goal to his name at the moment. Looks like a Wembley defeat to his name as well, but his Traore, and I'm afraid that rather sums up what we were saying about him. He gets into such good positions. This is something that stops him being, well, a truly top, top class player. But he's got the power, he's got the pace. It's just the decision making, which is a very difficult part to coach. Well, when he was a young player, everybody thought at some point he'll get better in that mm. he final might, pass. He, he might, might still. still. Yeah. But it hasn't come to the fore just yet. That's why he's always coming off the bench rather than starting games. Use him as an impact player. He's an impact now. Well, Cavalero has made some impacts this season. Jimenez and Cavalero. Ram Gomez. Oh, what could survive? By the skin of their teeth. How frustrating is that for Nuno? Could he have struck it here? No, he kind of gets it stuck under his feet. He does well to make the run. He does well to go past. Gomez, frustration. They've still got the corner to come. And uh, Watford just switched off a little bit. In by Vinagra, and the goalkeeper knocks it away. Back by Cody. Oh, there's a counter-attack on here. If Decore had played it, Gray would have been away. Vinagra. And now Gray could be away. It's played to Dini. What are Watford going to do here? Look for the goal or head for the corner? Oh. And Dini looks away in real disappointment because it was neither one thing or the other. Well, looked very tired. He was racing after that ball. Trudging after that ball, I would say. So there's still hope for Wolves. Mariapa meets it. Well, that's exactly where Watford want the ball. Throwing down that far side, I'm sure they try and throw it into the corner. Yeah, Matt, walking forward to take it. There are going to be two added minutes. He did show a great deal of nerve, didn't he, to stick that penalty away, Troy Deeney. He said he was going to hit it with power, he usually hits it with power, and that's exactly what he did. It's almost added power. It had the power to take it to extra time, it's been Watford's extra time. But it's not over yet. Two minutes recognised. Two minutes. Sema. Can't keep it. Bolly. Sema gets after it. Stayed in play. That would be a free kick to Wolves. Saiz fouled. Got a minute and a half. Let's get themselves back into this FA Cup tie to take it to penalties. Gomez saying, don't drop too deep. 
Cody puts everything he's got behind it. And, uh, Watford win the header with Messina. Gray is ahead of Pereira, whose uh, performance has been remarkable because he was barely fit to start, and here he is. That's offside. And there was another opportunity to run down the clock that they didn't take very well. It's very easy for us to say it when you're out there in the heat of the battle. Jimenez. Jan Matt is there, but it falls for Wolves. And Vinagre, who wastes no time getting in the cross. Oh, it's behind Doherty. Going to be kept in, is it? Yes. By Den Donker. Last chance for Wolves. Cavalero. It's still a chance for Wolves. Vinagre. Oh, it's a poor ball. And Gray should secure it. And Watford should secure the place in the final. Gray. Saying chase that to the Cures. One of the few players still in the game who can do that. 15 seconds. And uh, Jimenez could chase a back pass. Gomez slaps it forward. Then he gets a touch. It's over. Watford have got their place in the FA Cup final with one of the great comebacks in a semi final. A truly wonderful occasion at Wembley between the two W's. And Wolves were leading 2 0 and seemed to have it in the bag. But Watford pulled it out of the fire somehow. Dale Lafayo on as a substitute. Scored twice, had to go off in between. Dini hammered home the moment of the match, really, the penalty. They were 2 1 down in added time in regulation time. He won the penalty, converted the penalty, and Dale Lafayo in extra time won the semi final.